What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time bringing you my favorite companions in gaming, a video I'm sure everyone will love and no one will disagree with me about. Though as much as I enjoy making that joke at the beginning of these videos, I can honestly say that I keep making them because people really enjoy them and are actually really cool about it. So shout out to you guys for being a great community. But we are of course here today to talk about my favorite companions. So right there, these are my personal favorites. There are some notable companions that are absolutely not on this list that I know people are going to mention. And the short answer to all of those ones that you're thinking of is that I probably think they're pretty cool, they're just not my favorites. And then one more thing before we dive completely into this is that these are in no particular order. This is not the kind of list I would try to rank in any way, mostly because it would be incredibly difficult to do. And then you combine the fact that we're going across genre with characters from different games, and it just kind of feels a little bit silly. With no further ado, let's actually jump into this and talk about some of my favorite companions and gaming. So first up, we have to talk about Mort from Planescape Torment. He is the very first character you talk to in that game and serves as sort of your introduction to it. He is, of course, a floating skull who, like all of the companions in Planescape Torment, has a personal tie to your character that gets explained and elaborated upon across the game itself. However, he's very sarcastic, has a great sense of humor, which I feel like is largely a cover for the fact that he's done some pretty terrible things in his life, which is what serves as his personal torment. Overall, though, he's a great character who has both a really great story as well as serving as sort of the comic relief for that game. And if you didn't notice, the channel's logo is very similar to Mort, and I also go by Mortem online. And though it's not related to him at all, he gets five stars for great taste. For our next entry on the list, we have Kreia from KOTOR 2. And Kreia is a really interesting character. Truth be told, when you're first running through the game, she can come across a little bit annoying because no matter what you choose to do, she likes to give you a lecture about it, which I think is more the product of the game design at the time. But as the story unfolds and you find out who Kreia really is, I think it manages to really turn it around. Mostly because she presents a perspective on the Force that you don't really see anywhere else. She hates it. She thinks it makes people reliant on it to the point that they become useful useless without it. And much of the lectures she gives you are more about using the Force, period, as opposed to your own skills and merits. And while she sees the Force as a tool to be used, it's the people that use only it and nothing else that she seems to take a lot of problems with. And she spends most of the game acting as a mentor and companion to you, only so she can sort of force you to stand on your own two feet in the end. But honestly, just beyond that description, she is a very complicated character and easily the highlight of that entire game. But nonetheless, we do have a lot of other characters to cover here, so let's get going. Next up, we have Jehan from Divinity Original Sin 1 and 2. He is in both, though he is your companion in the first one. Jehan, if you didn't know, is actually where I got the phrase may you wander in wisdom from that I like to end my videos with, as that is something he says at the end of his conversations in DOS 2. But Jehan's a really cool character. He is a demonologist, actually, and he is in the first game about a thousand years old, and in the second, he's over 2,000 years old. He earned that longevity by getting the better of a demon after making a deal for immortality. He used to be the king of a long dead and forgotten nation. However, after taking a wife, he found out that that wife was actually a demon who was slowly taking his life away from him while also devouring his kingdom. He was studying demonology when he learned this, looking for a way to live and not die. Thus, he made a deal with a separate demon known as Balbareth, who granted him a thousand years to live. However, after killing Balbareth, Jehan becomes immortal permanently, and thus he shows up in Divinity Original Sin 2, well over 2,000 years old. But Jehan has an incredible story, plays a pretty pivotal role in Original Sin 2, especially if you're playing as Losa, and overall, he's just an incredible character that I really enjoyed a lot, as I thought his story and his voice acting were really top-notch. I actually did a lore video for him based on his background and story, and I highly recommend you check it out. I mostly used his voice acting for it, and I think it came out pretty well. Moving ever onward, next up on our list, we have Glory from Shadowrun Dragonfall. Glory is a really interesting character. In Shadowrun, people often get cybernetic enhancements, and she is one of those people. However, her augmentations are incredibly old and clunky, and she refuses to change them out or really talk to people much. And over the course of the game, as you ask her more and more questions, she lets you know that she kind of got sucked into a cult 
And after accidentally killing her mother, the only person who ever really cared for her, she ran away from said cult. However, she had already made a deal with an entity known as the Adversary, which is effectively the devil. And in order to stop this from happening, she got incredibly cybernetically augmented, and she uses the old stuff as a sort of self-imposed punishment. As a lot of cyberware in this game limits one's ability to call upon magic, and to the extent she had it done, it basically completely removed it. And she has a really great quest in that game as well, but overall just a really cool story and a really cool character. But to follow that up, we have Kelgar from Neverwinter Nights 2. Kelgar is a dwarf that loves to fight, and over the course of the game you can figure out why that is, as well as help him realize that there are more things to fight for, rather than just fighting for the sake of fighting. Kelgar, I think, is one of the best companions from that game, and unsurprisingly, he's one of the ones that you meet first. And over the course of the game, you can help him reunite with the dwarven clan that he has since been kind of shunned from, as again, trying to pick a fight with anything and everything can cause some problems. But Kelgar has some amazing banter for starters with the rest of the party like a lot of Neverwinter Nights 2 companions do, but I think what really sells it for me with Kelgar is helping him find his place in the world. There's a whole quest about everything that I've just mentioned really, and he gets a ton of character development and it's all really well done. So naturally, he's one of my favorites. But speaking of Neverwinter Nights, we have Deacon. Deacon is a companion in the expansions for Neverwinter Nights 1, Shadows of the Undren Tide and Hordes of the Underdark. However, he is a very intelligent kobold, and he's also a bard who aims to be a merchant and kind of just rise above his position as a kobold in a world where they are typically hunted down and killed. And while not a companion specifically, he does show up in Neverwinter Nights 2 as a merchant. And across those games, he's had plenty of opportunities to meet a real hero that he's trying to write a book about, and all of this kind of makes for a character that is really searching to be something more than what they are, which I can always appreciate. But up next, we have Palagina from Pillars of Eternity 1 and 2. Palagina is an avian godlike in a world where being a godlike means you have the physical attributes of one of the gods as they imparted their touch on you in the womb. Oftentimes they are seen as the children of those gods, which has much broader lore implications than we really have the time to get into. But Palagina is interesting because she is, for starters, a sort of hardened paladin type. However, she hated being a godlike because it made her different, and through a lot of experimentation and animancy, she was able to basically remove her godlike attributes, if you will. So while she used to look basically like a bird, after use of animancy to sort of cut the connection, so to speak, a lot of her feathers fell off and everything, and she's more human than godlike at this point. But naturally, she has a lot of angst and regrets about parts of her life that you can explore in various games, and when you combine those things, with the personality of someone who very clearly wants to do good, but also understands the realities of the world they live in, makes for a great character, and I always really enjoyed her in both of those games. Next up, we have one that I think might actually surprise people, as I have not really talked about them on the channel all that much. And it is, believe it or not, Blackwall from Dragon Age Inquisition. Now, honestly, Blackwall is, at first glance, a pretty boring human companion who is supposed to be a Grey Warden. However, it's where his personal quest comes into play that things get especially interesting, because you find out that Blackwall is not actually Blackwall. Blackwall's real name is Tom Rainier. And while he was trying to become a Grey Warden, the person he was serving under, who was actually Blackwall, was killed by Darkspawn. However, he joined up with the Grey Wardens to flee a life of crime that he was trying to make up for. So when he saw the actual Blackwall die, he sort of picked up his position, if you will, and tried to spread some good in the world that way. And through this quest, you can either just kind of leave him to die for past crimes, where he was ultimately responsible for the death of several people, or you can rescue him and help him on his way to becoming an actual Grey Warden. But what I like about Blackwall as a character is more that his idea and story revolves around the idea of redemption. This is someone who has messed up pretty deeply and ultimately commanded a massacre under his real name, Tom Rainier, but sought to make up for it as he was disgusted with himself for the decision. 
And he ultimately got caught and was sort of found out by trying to save someone who was being held responsible for his crimes, but he stepped up to keep it from happening because he didn't feel that Blackwall would let somebody die for something like that. So the common theme with Blackwall is redemption. He's trying to make up for his past, and you can give him the opportunity to do so. And honestly, stories like this where a character is just trying to aspire to be more than what they are and their past are things I can appreciate. Thus, while he is a pretty unassuming character for the most part, he is one of my favorites. Then next up on the list, we have Sabeel from Divinity Original Sin 2. Sabeel is a really interesting character in what is already an interesting world. She is an elf. Elves in Divinity are capable of experiencing the memories of others by eating their flesh. But Sabeel in particular was actually held as a slave for quite some time by the lizards, who use a combination of musical magic as well as scars to forcefully turn people into slaves where they have literally no control over what they're doing. Even that doesn't really tell you everything about Sabeel, because who she was before this was a very prominent elven figure that I really don't have time to explain, to be honest. But suffice to say, she was culturally very, very important to the elves. However, she was ultimately kidnapped, turned into a slave, as I mentioned, but not just that, turned into an assassin who started killing other notable elves. She was able to eventually break free of this, where she can potentially join you on your adventures as the Godwoken. But it doesn't end there, as she gets caught up in the fate of the elves. As the elves and their entire system of civilization, really, is actually a pretty big threat to the rest of the world at large, making her entire story incredibly complicated, and I thought it was all done really, really well. She's a complicated character, the events surrounding her are rather complicated and far-reaching, and you can help her navigate and solve all of that one way or the other. Or if you're playing as the Red Prince, which is the lizard guy, you can actually just sell her back into slavery, which is awful but hilarious and a really messed up option. But overall, just a really complicated character. I really appreciated all the thought that they put into everything surrounding her. Many of the game's main themes and ties all come back to her, as well as a few other characters, of course, but obviously one of my favorites. And then moving on from there, we have Varric again from Dragon Age, both Dragon Age 2 and Inquisition, actually. But Varric is our charismatic dwarf who does things a little differently than most other dwarves, but he's also a writer. He's also central to the plot, as he's one of the people in Dragon Age 2 that brushes up against what Red Lyrium is and can do to people, which has become a rather significant part of the plot. But he's especially interesting to me, as he's someone who has certainly paid the price of shunning dwarven traditions, which in Dragon Age is an incredibly strict society that does not leave a lot of leeway for personal freedoms, and Varric has shrugged a lot of that off in the name of being himself, as well as writing a lot of novels, and overall just being a really charismatic and cool character. But then, for our next entry, we have Garrus Vakarian, the Turian himself. So, Garrus is, of course, from the Mass Effect series. He's with us, potentially, from the first through third game, and he's on honestly one of the best companions in that entire series, and for good reason. Now, the simplest way to put it is that Garrus was a space cop. He was a CSEC officer on the Citadel who enforce a lot of the laws, make sure everything runs smoothly. Again, basically a space cop. But he's frustrated with all of their rules and not being able to get things done, so he joins you, which of course is where a lot of your adventures kick off. However, in between games one and two, he winds up becoming a sort of vigilante, hunting down gang members. And then between games two and three, he becomes a very important official with the Turian military, where he's advising them on what little is known about the Reapers and the threat they pose. But overall, he's a great character who gives off a lot of great buddy cop energy with Commander Shepard, and a lot of it is really well done. But more than a lot of the other companions on this list, he just feels like he would be a great friend, which makes him a great companion in a game, which is naturally why he's on this list. But that brings us to our final entry, and one I've talked about a little bit before, and this is actually Balthier from Final Fantasy XII. He's easily my favorite character from that entire game, but Balthier is a sky pirate. Before he was a pirate... He was actually an imperial judge. He wasn't just any judge, he was actually the son of none other than Sid, which is one of the main antagonists of the game. But judges in particular in this setting are really the judge, jury, and executioners in many ways. And ultimately, after watching his father be turned into a lunatic, 
by his own measure, as well as seeing Arcadia make aggressive moves towards the other countries in the story, he decides that he's had enough and he takes off with his friend Fran to become a sky pirate, and we meet him trying to rob a palace, actually. But all of this combines to make a character that is relatively disillusioned with the world and somewhat unwillingly gets drawn into the story to save the world, as what would it be a game without that? Balthier often embodies the idea of a carefree life in a world that is largely torn by war, even if he is really just running from his own rather checkered past. But combine all of that stuff with a healthy dose of charisma, and he's easily one of my favorite characters in gaming from one of my favorite games, actually, Final Fantasy XII, which is not a game I talk about a lot, but easily one of my favorite games. I haven't played the Zodiac Age yet, though, and I will potentially get around to reviewing that for the channel at some point, if for no other reason than to talk about some of the things I love about that game, Balthier being one of them. That guys is going to do it for my list of favorite companions. I certainly hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. Don't forget to tell me about your favorite companions down in the comment section below. But regardless of all that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.